Hey there! In this video, I'll explain everything you need to know about Kubernetes Ingress Networking. I'll walk you through the main options and why you might choose one versus another, depending on your needs and specific cluster environment. First, let's draw out the basic networking for a couple of Kubernetes nodes. The details depend on which CNI plugin is being used. To learn more, you can check out the other videos in this series to understand how things fit together across a range of different networking options. In this video, I'm using Calico as the example, which connects the pods to the host using a pair of virtual Ethernet interfaces and sets up the Linux kernel to act as a simple virtual router that connects everything together. In my previous video, I covered how Kubernetes services can be used to load balance requests to services at the network layer by mapping IP addresses and ports to services. In this video, we have an example service 1 that is backed by pods A and C. Kubernetes Ingress builds on top of Kubernetes services to provide load balancing at the application layer, mapping HTTP requests to services. The details of how this is implemented depend on which Ingress controller you are using. The first implementation approach is to run the Ingress load balancers as pods within the cluster itself. There are many different Ingress controllers to consider that follow this pattern including, for example, the Nginx ingress controller. The advantages of this approach are that you can easily horizontally scale your ingress solution up to the limits of Kubernetes. Plus, you can choose the ingress controller that best suits your specific needs, for example, with particular load balancing algorithms or security options, without any dependency on the underlying infrastructure. But you still need a way to get your ingress traffic to the in-cluster ingress pods. So normally, the ingress pods are exposed externally as a Kubernetes service, accessed via a node port, service IP advertisement, or an external network load balancer. In this example, we'll configure the ingress service to use a network load balancer, with external traffic policy set to local. Any connections to the service are load balanced to the ingress services node port, but only on nodes hosting ingress pods. Qproxy then intercepts the connection to the node port and using a technique called NAT, Network Address Translation, the destination is mapped from the node IP and node port to the chosen local backing pod IP and service port. As a result, the source IP of the client is preserved all the way to the ingress pods, so you can use Kubernetes network policy to limit access to specific external clients if desired. When the ingress pod receives a connection, it examines the HTTP request URL to determine which service it should be load balancing the request to. The request is then forwarded to the chosen backing pod over a separate connection. So in this example, pod C sees the request coming from pod B, not the original client. Any network policy for pod C needs to be authored accordingly. The return traffic follows the same path in reverse with the node port and network load balancer NATs being reversed for the connection between the client and the ingress pod. The other implementation approach for ingress is to use external application load balancers. The exact options available depend on which cloud provider or on-prem hardware you are using but most support the basic pattern of load balancing to service node ports. The advantages of this approach are that your cloud provider handles the operational complexities of the ingress for you. The downsides are a potentially more limited set of features compared to the rich range of in-cluster ingress solutions, and the maximum number of services exposed by ingress being constrained by cloud provider specific limits. When the application load balancer receives a connection, it examines the HTTP request URL to determine which service it should be load balancing the request to. The request is then load balanced to one of the nodes over a separate connection to the service's node port. Qproxy's standard node port handling then intercepts the connection to the node port, makes its load balancing decision, and NATs to the chosen backing pod IP and service port. As the backing pod may be on a different node, the source IP also has to be NATed to the node IP, so that response traffic returns via the same node where the NAT can be reversed. In addition to this basic approach of load balancing to service node ports, some cloud providers support a second mode of application layer load balancing, which load balances directly to the pods backing each service, 
without going via no ports or other key proxy service handling. This has the advantage of eliminating the potential second network hop associated with node ports load balancing to a pod on a different node. The potential disadvantage is that if you are operating at very high scales, for example with hundreds of pods backing a service, you may exceed the application layer load balancer's maximum limit of IPs it can load balance to in this mode. In this case, switching to an in-cluster ingress solution is likely to be the better fit for you. That's all for now. If you haven't already watched it, be sure to check out my previous video covering Kubernetes services in more detail. This may help you decide whether Kubernetes Ingress is the right approach for your needs. Hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.